What's up, guys? What do we got here? We got Charlie's Angels. I dropped the Charlie's Angels review today for anybody that caught it. What a lovely transfer. There was a lot of awesome 4K crispiness in this movie. You might not think it, but I mean, come on, look at the ladies. They're looking nice in this, these little thumbnails here, right? Well, in typical Sony fashion, it does look fantastic. A lot of the shots were fantastic looking. There were a handful of shots that didn't look fantastic looking. I think I had mentioned it. There's some uh, very low lit scenes that were very grainy, didn't look very good. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with like maybe using your cell phone camera at night or if you're at a bar or something like that. <clears throat> How the image tends to get a little, you know, grainy looking and noisy. There's a bunch of scenes like that in this movie, which you would think for a big Sony Hollywood film, you wouldn't have that problem. But I saw that in a, in a bunch of shots. So, and some of the aerial shots looked like they were using maybe like a cheap, a cheap a drone or something like that um like i've seen youtube videos with better drone shots from those like a dji mavic or something some of these aerial shots just didn't look good or maybe they were like stock footage they dug up somewhere but other than that other than those few shots that i saw i mean this is a really quite sharp crisp very detailed picture Especially the, um, you know, the first shot of Kristen Stewart when she's outside on the balcony. I mean, the camera really gets close up on her face. I mean, you can see little, little tiny pores and all that on her, her little cheeks. Little peach fuzz around the side of her jawline. Um, you can see the mascara. It's kind of caked on. Awesome detail. And this is on a movie with a 2K DI. The movie, on the other hand not the best movie i do prefer the the original two i think they only had two like charles angels and full throttle i do think those are better movies not that those were good movies to begin with but they were better movies than this one but this one i mean the 2020 version there were some uh there's some good actiony parts but overall not the best right you know what i mean but uh, yeah, oh, and also this is Sony. It's a Sony movie, and it's in D or sorry, IMAX enhanced. So you will get IMAX enhanced visuals. I watched a little bit of it on my Sony A9G, and I'll be honest with you, I don't. Uh, it didn't look like the image was scrubbed or anything like that. So I don't know. Just being IMAX enhanced does it mean you get IMAX enhanced audio and video, or one or the other? But visually, it did look like it was just shot digitally. But it doesn't look like those documentaries that you would watch where, you know, the grain is scrubbed from it. Because there's there was no grain in this, but it didn't look like anything was scrubbed. So, I mean, I would assume it lo would look the same if you watched it on an IMAX television or on a non-IMAX non television. Because it looked pretty much exactly the same on my uh, projector than it did on the Sony television set. Because, you know, I was kind of peeking out the door in my lobby and then in the theater. And it looked pretty much the same. You know, colors, everything were the same. Brightness, the same. Everything looked the same. As far as the audio, I, I said in the video that I didn't review the IMAX enhanced audio. Simple fact, because I think whatever Arkham is doing with their IMAX enhanced implementation <clears throat> it just um just didn't sound good everything was just lower sounding and volume so as far as everything that I've heard IMAX enhanced is supposed to sound pretty good but that's uh that's not the case that I got that's not the case that I got with the uh with this transfer um, maybe the next version, 
I don't know what I have coming up next. That might have IMAX enhanced, but actually, I have a. I'm not going to tell you what. I'm not going to tell you a processor I might have coming it coming in in the next week or so. But fingers crossed, it's going to be a good one. A very, 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 very good one. Um, but in the meantime, I did throw in the Emotiva XMC2 back in the audio rack. I don't think Emotiva is going to get IMAX enhanced or maybe DTSX Pro, even though they said the software could handle it, the processor could handle it. But, uh, you know, I guess we'll have to wait on that one. But speaking of Emotiva, they did recently drop new firmware, which is firmware 8.1, which I had installed last night. And I got to say, it's... um. It does make the XMC2 a lot speedier. So just like flipping through menu items, things like that, quicker. Switching inputs are actually a little bit quicker as well. Usually, you know, I'm used to the, to the slow switching on the on the projector, but you know, when I was using it on the television, it was noticeably quicker. Um, as far as like stability. I think I've only watched, I watched Charlie's Angels and I watched Midway again. Um, I tested a couple scenes and, you know, my normal usage on the Emotiva products, I've never had an issue with it. I know there's a lot of other folks that are having issues with it, but for my usage, everything's been, you know, fine so far. And it does sound better than the Arcam. The Arcam, you know, for the money, it's $4,500. The XMC2 is $3,000. And, uh, you know, the cheaper one, the cheaper Emotiva just sounds better than the Arcam at this point in time. Arcam, Arcam also just released a new firmware update on their processor, which is now on version 1.1, I believe. Let me just bring that up real quick. Okay, processor. So look at that. You see, I always find this funny. Now we're on version <laughs> version 1.1. I remember this happening when I um, when I reviewed the NAD M17. I think I had said, said something about the firmware was out of date or whatever. And then like a few days later, they uh. They released a new firmware, and uh, and they got it working. It was actually DTS X. When I reviewed the NID M17 V2, which nobody had reviewed for quite some time, like there's no other reviews on there except for mine, I think. And um, I mentioned that DTS X wasn't on it, but it was on every other processor and receiver. I dropped the review. A couple days later, NAD drops their DTS X update. I do this for the Arcam. I give it a shitty review. I try to be nice about it. I don't think I, I don't think I like destroyed it or anything, but look at this. I dropped the review. What happens? Two days later, they drop an update. So I think, you know, if there is more vocal people out there with products like this, like Emotiva, NAD, you know, Denon Morantz, even, you know, Denon Morantz, they, they never seem to have issues though. Like the smaller boutique brands, if there were more vocal people that had these in their hands and they did review did reviews like this rather than just always being positive about it, then I think you would see um, the companies move a little bit quicker to fixing bugs and issues. So I mean I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that I did the review and then I'm glad that there's some new updates that they just dropped this new firmware for the Arcam. And for what I'm hearing, they fixed a bunch of stuff. I heard that they fixed the IMAX. I don't know that for myself because I took it out of the rack. It's back in the box right now. But if they if they fixed IMAX, I think that's a good thing because I think we're seeing more films in IMAX. And the fact that it just sounded not good, it's just low in volume, that's a positive. And, um, you know, if they can fix uh, the other issues with Dirac, I don't know if it's so much RCAM, but I've heard that they did a few bug fixes on the Dirac software where they were fixing distances. 
I can't confirm that 100% because, uh, like I said, it's back in the box. But, you know, when, uh, when I did the review, for whatever reason, my speakers are only about, you know, six or seven or feet away from me. But when, when Dirac did the measurements, it put it out like 24 feet from where I was sitting, which is clearly, clearly wrong. I'm only, like I said, I'm only sitting six feet away from it. And um, my room isn't even 24 feet. It's like half that. So the fact that it screwed up the measurements so badly, not a good look, especially for a $4,500 product. So, I mean, anybody that has done the update on their Arcan product, then, you know, leave a comment down below and uh, let us know what they did, if they fixed anything, if it was a worthwhile update or not. But in the meantime, you know, I wasn't uh, thoroughly enjoying the product unless I turned off correction and did measurements myself. Um, if I measured the distance and my levels, then everything everything sounded pretty good. I actually preferred the sound on the previous firmware, version 0.99, which had no hissing issue. Everything just seemed a little bit more just cleaner looking, a little bit more live sounding. And then they dropped the um, the last one, which is 1.04, which kind of killed it for me. And that's why I kind of rushed to get it out. Well, I don't want to say I rushed to get it out, but uh, I wanted to get it done because, um, you know, doing these 4K reviews, which I haven't done a lot of, um, I felt that I wasn't kind of giving the best, you know, I could really trust the R-Cam for watching movies just because it wasn't working, you know, perfectly like, like the Emotiva was or anything that else that I had in there. So I wanted to get it done and get it out of there. So, so that's it for the Arcan man. Uh, it's a shame. It's, it's a nice piece. It's kind of an ugly piece, not quite as ugly as the, as the mono price. Um, for, and for all those guys that are asking me if I'm going to review the mono price, I did reach out to them. They are not 100% uh, certain on their firmware update. So I guess to their standards, it's not working 100% where they're going to trust to give it to reviewers and then reviewers are going to give it a bad review, kind of like this Arcam. Um, but, you know, he did email me back and he wanted to give it to me for about a week or two you know i was still waiting on that obviously nothing came out and um so right now you know i really have no interest in it but i guess it if there's like a, a huge interest in the community here then maybe i'll try to get it in i know um uh, i know there's a bunch of other reviewers that are in line to get it in their hands so i'm sure besides me you're going to see a bunch of other guys talking about it. But honestly, I mean, you know, I'm the kind of guy that thinks if it's something that I don't want to own, then I really wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to review it. <clears throat> like I said, you know, I, I don't think it's a, I'm sure it's a great piece. I think it's made by, by ATI. So I'm sure it's a great sounding piece, you know, if it works properly. But I mean, if I want something, if I want to own something, like I said, it's got to look good. If it doesn't look good in my audio rack, then I don't want to own it. Then I don't want to talk about it because then I have no passion to talk about it. So like, what's the point? But in the meantime, you know, we'll see what's up with that. Um, I do have the XMC2 back in my rack. So, you know, I've been testing that out. The newest, newest firmware, like I said, is 1.8. So far, so good. I haven't had any issues with it. Like I said, no issues with the previous firmware, at least for me. I don't use it with a television set like a lot of users do with like eARC and all that stuff. So I don't really notice. I don't notice that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, my uh, processor and review usage is usually pretty basic. It's just proje projector, 4K Blu-ray player, and... Uh, Maybe like Apple TV, Roku. That's about it, though. So be on the lookout for that review. I have been I have been holding off doing the review on the Emotiva products 
just because I, I would like to talk about it when it gets room correction. So I have no idea when that's going to come. I've been told many times that it's supposed to be soon. That was like, what, like a month and a half ago, maybe two months now. You know, I still have the RMC one. I still, I still have that here, back here in the room, XMC2. So I guess we'll have to wait, wait and see. You know, I don't know if it's the the chipset that they're using. I think I think the chipsets that they're using are kind of the same across the board with all these manufacturers. Um, Emotiva, RKM Audio Control, JBL, uh, Monoprice. I believe they're using the same chipset. I mean, somebody correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. So that might be why we're seeing a lot of, you know, bugs and things of that sort kind of delaying room correction updates and buggy behavior and stability issues so it could be just the chip that chipset that you, that they're using which you know it kind of makes sense because they're all having kind of the same issues unfortunately so so that's what's in the works right now um like i said hopefully Hopefully this week I do have uh, something nice coming up to unbox and play with. We'll see. I've been waiting for this. This is like, it's like cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. If you're a home theater dude, if you're a home theater guy, cream of the crop. We'll see what happens this week. All right. So what else happened? Uh, what else did we cover this week? We did, or I did rather. Mm, oh, a little bit of uh, industry news, I guess. As of today, Cambridge Audio is now Rune ready. Anybody that streams their music using Rune, the Cambridge Audio Edge products and their CX products are now Rune ready. I got that email today, and I guess anybody that cares that uses rune should know cambridge audio products are now capable of using rune i have never used rune because i do believe there's a cost for it and i think it's kind of expensive just to stream your music although i do hear the i do hear like look at that look at this annual membership is $119 a year, one year ruined data service for managing your library, which seems like ridiculous, right? Lifetime membership is $700. You know, I would hate to speak bad about it, but because I've never used it. But it seems this is just like one reason why I haven't tried to use it it just seems like like why do i want to spend a lot of money just to have software manage my music i mean there's all kinds of freebie software to manage your music how how different could it be <laughs> you know what i'm saying like 120 dollars for a music library sounds ridiculous to me but you know people love it i don't know what the big deal is you know i've got cool buzz and title and uh you know, that seems perfectly fine for me. But anybody that does do, that does use it, Cambridge Audio, their CXN products and Edge products, which I have reviewed on the channel. If you didn't watch those reviews, you know, give a quick Google search. I did review them on the channel. And they're uh, standout products. I don't think a lot of people, I don't know why, like, I don't think a lot of people talk about them that much. You know what I mean? I mean, check it out. This is their integrated amplifier, which I, I actually, I should probably get this in for review because it's, uh, the edge piece is pretty awesome sounding. I hear good things. I hear good, bad things about them, but my, my use case awesome stuff man like i kept this in my system for a good like half year like six months um which one was it this guy yo this thing was so awesome and he's so nice looking too 
yo that's their uh that's their preamp and such a nice piece very very nice piece it's uh just straight like aluminum it's like built like a sherman tank if it was silver you get that nice color display in the front um the matching amplifier beast four thousand dollars hold on a second here did they raise the price yeah so the edge amplifier is five thousand dollars and the edge w is four thousand dollars i'm gonna have to go back and watch my video because for some reason i feel these prices have went up i think the edge and q is four thousand maybe the edge w used to be three thousand so that that looks like it went up you know i could be wrong but i was pretty sure it was only seven thousand dollars altogether it could be the uh you know those chinese tariffs again which is kind of crazy you know i probably sh i probably should have bought it at that time because these things uh they sounded tremendous with my uh esls uh but i'm losing I'm losing focus here the they're now ruined ready so anybody that wants to know anybody that owns it ruined ready but bam there it is what else we got here ba -ba -ba. we talked about the cambridge talked about the art cam talked about charlie's angels and my next next video which i plan on having up probably tomorrow um what's today today's monday yeah possibly tuesday possibly tuesday night is gonna be i know a lot of you guys want to see the zapiti review which i have been working on i'm like you know i'm still kind of just working out a couple things and scripting things out that's like halfway done my scripting's like halfway done and um i'm shooting for probably friday for the zapiti review maybe saturday the latest um what else for the zapiti so Zipidi should be done this week. Definitely before next week. But tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm thinking maybe tomorrow night or Wednesday I'm going to wrap up the Golden Ear Subwoofer Soundbar Combo. The Super Cinema Array and the Super Cinema Sub X. Um, spoiler alert. Slight spoiler alert. The Super Sub X the super sub which is a little little baby little tiny 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 baby subwoofer you know this guy right here look at this i don't know if you i don't know if you guys saw the unboxing i, I did the unboxing a couple days ago but uh this guy man this little baby subwoofer the super sub x with dual eight inch drivers in it 10 inch passive radiator nine and a half inch passive radiator 1400 watt class d amp little baby it's like the size of my laptop all right i'm just exaggerating it's not the size of the laptop it's a little bigger than that but damn yo this thing is this thing is insane sounding for a little baby subwoofer oh how can they get that much bass out of a little tiny cube it was crazy that's all that's all i'm gonna say about that that's all i gotta say i don't i don't get it but you know i played it next to the rel 15 incher the predator i'm not saying it i'm not saying it sounds better than the rel but for this little tiny box impressive right now i have it next to the sb3000 and uh yeah I'm thinking maybe Golden Ear doesn't get enough credit for their subwoofers because uh, this thing is uh, quite magical sounding. It's very nice. So that should be done tomorrow and, or well, tomorrow night, maybe Wednesday. I'm going to wrap that up. And then of course we covered the Ben Q, mm, which I have right there. It's like right behind me. Let me see. Let me just aim that over here. 
Look at that. That's the Ben Q. Shout out to Ben Q for sending that over, over to me to review. There it is, the Ben Q. Um, this is, was another one, man. This was another. This was another video that I think. You know, I didn't make a big deal of it in the review, but for whatever reason. You know, I spoke about how the HDR worked and that when you would switch over to HDR and to any one of their HDR modes, whether it be display, game, or cinema, it would start off really bright. And then like two, sec two, two or three seconds later, the display would just kind of dim down, which didn't make any sense to me because I've never seen any kind of display do that before it's like you switch it over and it's not supposed to dim down um like i get there's a sensor on the front for their brightness intelligence plus type of thing which is um like a lot of the tvs have it kind of adjusts brightness to your room's surroundings so if you have a lot of lights on it boosts up the brightness if you're in the dark room then I might dim it down so it's not so harsh on your eyeballs. And there's no way to turn that, that feature off on the monitor itself. Like it's always active if you're watching HDR material. So, you know, in the video I had mentioned that whatever you're watching, it just gets dim all of a sudden, which for HDR content, you don't want it to get dim. You want it to be bright and you can't, you can't make it bright. It's what it is. HDR is once it's on for my for mine at least. I think mine might be defective. They're going to send me another one just because I guess they felt bad that it was uh defective. Um cuz I I've watched jeez, you know, before I before I uploaded my um uh, I uploaded the video, I think I watched like six or seven other reviews on the same monitor just to be sure that I wasn't uh, you know, losing my mind. And no, nobody had mentioned anything about it. So I, I guess that my BenQ monitor is defective. So they're they're actually going to send me out a new one because um, cause they noticed the issue. Maybe I noticed it. Nobody else is noticing it because they got a free monitor. And they just don't want to say nothing about it. But listen, if it, if it don't work right, it don't work right. So I told them shit don't work right. So thanks BenQ for sending me another one. Hopefully this is defective. You know, honestly, there was a, this is my second one. The first one that I had was cracked out of the box. <laughs> this one, this one, it seems like the HDR is broken. So now they're sending me another one. So um, thank you BenQ for, you know, being on the ball and taking care of this. But I think that's it, man. I think that's all that I covered this week. Um, like I said, I've got the Golden Ear review coming up during the week. Probably tomorrow I'm shooting for. Tomorrow night I'm shooting for. Um, I have everything pretty much done. It's all scripted out. I scripted out everything that I needed to do. And then I just got to throw in a lot of B-roll smack down on top get that edit done get it uploaded <clears throat> get it out to you guys you know all the soundbar guys out there not you know not a lot of videos on the golden air super cinema soundbar or even or even the the subwoofer like i don't get it these are really good products and the soundbar the soundbar has been out for a few years now you know and um you know not too much chatter at least at least on youtube i mean the soundbar came out in like 2013 you know you think after like six years no i'm sorry seven years uh there'd be a little bit more you know video coverage but there just isn't and especially especially the subwoofer man the you know i don't want to talk too much about the subwoofer but very impressed with it they're a little expensive i get it you know, for the same price, you can get a Samsung or LG soundbar. You know, with Dolby Atmos and all that, all that stuff, which is uh, which is cool. 
but um you know this is kind of uh the golden air is kind of on a kind of on a different level it's from like an you know like an audiophile brand rather than a mass consumer brand so you should definitely expect a a different different level of sound quality when you're getting something that's not so mass market produced from your big consumer electronics companies but i think i mentioned um on the last stream that i do have the i do have this guy in i do have this in right now i have not taken it out of the box it's still sitting in the hallway so i've got that i'll probably throw an unboxing up maybe you know maybe next week so i'm kind of excited to check that out this might be the this it just sounds like it might be like the budget king you know i get it it came out 2014 and there's not too much no same thing with golden air not too much chatter on this on the uh the sue research sue research vtf 15h mark ii i've heard nothing but good stuff about it um i mean check it out man it goes down to 16 hertz yo that's killer this is only a 850 dollars subwoofer and it goes down to 16 hertz it's a 15 incher 2000 watt amp pretty sick i mean it's got xlr too i mean come on i get it, it came out in 2014 i think maybe you know it's not like I never heard of uh, these subwoofers before. I think they started off maybe around the SVS time. And like SVS just kind of blew up. And uh, Sue Research just never, I feel like they never just kind of caught on. And there's, like I said, there's not much on these subwoofers either. Like legit videos on YouTube to check out. I mean, I think there's a lot of, like, written reviews to check out. But, uh, you know, like Sound & Vision. There you go. Sound & Vision did a review on it. But again, man, not a lot of stuff to check out on YouTube. I mean, how many people how many people read Sound & Vision nowadays or Stereophile or Home Theater Mag? Everybody, you know, you don't want to spend the extra money from paper. And come on, you don't want to... Uh, you don't want to add to the landfill of paper. You know what I'm saying? Like people are on YouTube nowadays. I I wish more companies reached out to YouTubers to get their products in our hands to talk about them. Because I feel, you know, a lot of people rely on YouTube for these video reviews. So I'm glad that uh, they're sending this out to me to check out. I think uh, may, there might be like one or two videos from like actual YouTube reviewers that, that spoke about it. But um other than that nothing nothing really about the subwoofer and it, it does look very impressive for 850 dollars so that is coming as well that's the only other one uh what else am i working on like of course you know i've got i've got some other projects that i'm working on with audioholics so stay tuned for that if you're not subscribed to audioholics you know definitely uh I'm going to be over there probably in the next few weeks doing a couple products over there. So good stuff there. But yeah, let me um, take a couple of questions. Then I am going to sign off. What do we got? Mm -mm -mm. Can we replay these live streams after you air them live? Yeah, usually usually I post them online. Sometimes I don't. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I do the live streams and I go and watch them back. And then I feel that I'm getting bored watching myself, so I don't I don't post them. <laughs> so it's like if you want to watch them, you know, you got to catch them live. <laughs> um Tristan Jones in here. Do you think it was so sharp and de detailed because of the new projector you are watching it on? Uh, nope. It looked just as sharp. I'm assuming we're talking about Charlie's Angels. 
No, it looked just as good on the on the Sony Charlie's Angels, that is. Don't get me wrong, there's some good parts in Charlie's Angels, you know. I guess I guess if you just like you know, if you like mindless fun. Mindless fun? Was it even fun? I don't, I don't even know if it was fun, but there was a couple of fun parts. Not gonna lie, you know, Krista Stewart was looking she was looking all right in the movie. She was looking all right. So I didn't I didn't mind that so much. <laughs> Wait, I'm sure, I'm sure John Wick can kill all three of them with a pencil. <laughs> if John Wick is killing three girls with a pencil, I'm sure the Joker could kill John Wick with a pencil. <laughs> uh, um, what else we got here? Uh, ben Q for the win. Hell no. No. Uh, Randy McMinn, Audio Control Maestro M9 will be my next theater purchase. You know, I've been in talks with Audio Control, and we're talking about the 7 and 9, but it seems uh, since, you know, I think it would be uh, maybe a little foreshadowing that perhaps JBL and Audio Control haven't released their products because Arcam has been so, you know, bug-ridden problem ridden I'm thinking that's why we haven't seen the new JBLs or the audio controls so that's you know that's my take on that because I really wanted to uh, I really wanted to check out the audio control and the JBL I wanted to actually buy the JBL I don't think I mentioned it. I, no, actually, I know I mentioned it, but I bought the Arcam. Like that's mine. I own it. I paid for, <laughs> paid forty five hundred dollars for that, because I wanted to be. I wanted to get it out there. Get that review out there. So I was like, they was they weren't emailing me back. Now I know the reason why they did. They didn't email me back because <laughs> the fucking thing is like kind of shitty. Uh, so now it makes sense why they didn't email me back or why they haven't sent out review samples to any reviewers. So, uh, you know, I just went around him and, and bought it at my local uh, Magnolia Design Center. They sold it to me. I don't know if they were supposed to or not, but I got it. And uh, now I know the reason why you don't see a lot of reviews on them, even like written reviews. So I bought it. And unfortunately, you know. Listen, I need to I need to sell this thing. So anybody that wants an Arkham AV40, which I'm sure they're going to fix in the future, uh, it's for sale. You can get a good discount on it. All you got to do is email me. You get a pretty good discount on it. I'm talking maybe 50% off on an Arkham AV40 if you're interested. Just saying. I'm sure it's going to get better. That's it. I'm just saying. All right. Um, what else we got here? Um, Lost Beans 97. I hope we get an IMAX enhanced re-release for Spider-Man for From Home because I'll definitely double dip on it. You know, I thought about getting IMAX on Fandango because it is IMAX enhanced, right? Because I had the Arcam, but seeing how Arcam has failed me, I can't buy it on Fandango and do a, re a review. So, uh, sorry. Oh, what else we got here? Mm, what's this? Tristan Jones says Trinov. Oh, Trinov is very expensive. The altitude is very expensive. 16 and the 32. I th what is the 32 cost like 40 grand or something like that <laughs> i think the uh the altitude 16 is uh is like seventeen thousand dollars if i'm not mistaken seventeen point five thousand dollars i think that's what the altitude 16 cost um or the lingdorf actually i wish i could get the lingdorf in for review 
I think I would have a better chance of getting the Trinov. But um, I think the Lingdorf is only in the UK. Big Kane 23 in the house. What's up, Big Kane? Uh, Big Kane 23, have you went to see Invisible Man? Shane. Yes, I did. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I tweeted out that yes, I did go to see Invisible Man over... Um, when did I go see that? I think I went to go see it on Sunday. Or was it Monday? No, I think I saw it Saturday. I saw Invisible Man on Saturday. Uh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I saw it in Adobe Atmos Theater. This is my... This is my Invisible Man review that I saw in a Dolby Atmos theater. It wasn't Dolby Vision theater, but Dolby Atmos. And I think the beginning of the movie has so much bass in it. There are these huge bass notes that just kind of drop during the beginning of the movie. Insane. I felt that it was bottoming out, bottoming out the subwoofers <laughs> at the theater. Like it was so strong. The only thing I thought was... This is going to sound awesome at home in about a month and a half when they release it on digital. So I can't I can't wait to rewatch it again because I think the Atmos is going to be pretty good. Um, it was uh, the Atmos mix was pretty good. Like I said, there was there's some good there's some decent effects in the overhead channels. And we're talking about a low budget movie here. I think the budget was like seven million dollars for this movie, and I think it did like fifty million over the weekend, which is like in like like an insane um, turnaround for such a low budget horror flick. Actually, I don't even think it was a horror flick; it was more like a sci-fi flick. Um, but you know, really good sound mix in my Atmos theater for such a low budget movie, and the movie itself was uh, really good. You know, a couple of uh, things that you got to kind of throw out, you know, logistically. But other than that, man, good solid movie. Um, there was some good jump scares. I went to go see it with Patrick. And, you know, they had him act like legit jumping out of the seat. Like, I thought it was funny. I was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, yo, that got me. I was like, yeah, I get it, y'all. There's some there's some good jump scares in it, like legit ones. And the fact that they can uh, pull that off with very little effects, because, I mean, let's face it, it's the invisible man. It's a, a lot of the movies just done with, like, camera panning and not even, like, camera trickery, just, like, atmospheric music and moving the camera slightly to make you think think maybe he's standing in the corner or maybe he's not and then a pan back a little bit of creepy music a little bit of bass and you think the invisible man's there i mean so pretty really good use like i felt that i could have made the movie myself because it was such a such a simple movie but uh, i mean really really great acting on uh, what was her name i don't know her name the the chick from uh mad men um, good acting and a little, I like to think there's a little twist at the end, a little bit of a Shyamalan ism at the end there. Definitely worth a watch. Um, and I can't wait to check it out when it, when it drops on 4k, I think it's going to be a big one, especially for audio. I think the audio is going to be, I think it's going to be like a quiet place, you know, levels where not a lot of crazy, insane, you know, sound effects, just real uh, atmosphere. And I think it's going to be really good on uh, on 4K Blu-ray and, you know, at the house. So uh, I'm, re I'm really looking forward to checking that out when it comes out. But definitely go check it out if you haven't, go if you haven't gone and seen it. Just a really good move over overall. You know, good, good acting, good character development, I felt. And just overall, just uh, really enjoyable. What else we got here? Uh, Mr. John De La Costa. John De La Costa. That's my man right there. Patreon subscriber, John De La Costa in the house. What is the best calibration disc for the Sony projectors? 695. Need help with contrast or any other secret? 
Mm, good calibration disc. You know, there is a... What's that disc called? Um, Spears... I think it's the Spears and Munsell disc you can pick up. I don't know if you can pick that up on Amazon or not, but let's take a gander and uh, see what we have here. Uh, Spears and... Let me just type that in here. I think you're going to have to get that directly from them, if I'm not mistaken. But this is a good disc that you can check out. And there's, um, you know, 4K HDR. There it is right there. Check it out. So you can use that to, um, you know, if you want to calibrate it at your house the best that you can. I would check that out. Listen, if you can't, if you don't want to buy it from this website, I would say, you know, yo, call up, uh, call up our guy, Robert at Value Electronics. He has these on hand and, you know, you're only in Florida, I believe. And he can, um, he can just ship it to you. Let me just get the website real quick. He could ship it to you. I believe he has them in stock, so he can get a. He could probably get them out to you quicker. So you know, this is valueelectronics.com, which um, you know they're partners with us. Check it out. That's me. Yo, that's me right there. Look at that. That's me, right there. So yeah, um, yo, just get it from them. Just call them. Just tell them we sent you. Yo, he might. He might like give it to you for free who knows i don't know but you know just email him and uh tell him i sent you and he will get that out to you asap for sure you know it's a 4k hdr a lot of uh test patterns and all that good stuff on there oh by the way by the way by the way um uh, right here coming june right there anybody that wants to attend it's June 10th to the 11th during CE week at the Jacob Javits Center in New York City. They will be hosting their annual television shootout, um, I believe, on June 10th. The 4K shootout is going to happen. And June 11th, they're going to have the 8K shootout. So we are going to be there. I'm going to be there. We're going to be live streaming, I think, both days. Um, it's going to be myself. Elias is going to be there. We were, we will be manning the cameras. This year should be pretty good. Oops, what's Siri? This year should be pretty good. I mean, we're we're going to be try to do. We're going to try to do um, multi. You know multi-cameras this year instead of just having one stationary camera so we'll try to get some better audio with some of the speakers and some different angles with the um with the different tv sets so definitely man if you can't watch you know if you can't get there in person you know you can watch it live i think it's going to be a pretty good shootout this year it's going to be different than the other ones it's going to look better that's for sure because because you know we're gonna be there doing it so definitely check that out um again that's uh june 10th 11th 2020 ce week jacob jacob javits center i don't know if there's a cost for it to get in the javits center um there might be i'm not 100 percent sure but um usually usually the shootout's free so i don't i don't know how it's going to work this year but definitely if you're you're in, you're in New York or in Connecticut, uh come and check it out. It usually lasts man, it's usually long. It usually lasts a while, right? It's usually lasts about six to eight hours. It's like a full day. It's like a full day of work. I mean, they judge everything. If you didn't see the last shootout, it's uh it's posted on my channel. You could check it out. And uh like I said, you know, usually you know, they start, I think, like 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Then they do like a break, like a lunch break around noon. Then they come back and wrap it up. And, uh, you know, they they name the winner for 4K. 
and it's like a big thing you know it's a nice place to the jack the javits center is a pretty nice place they make it official um you know they get up on stage announce the winner really nice building you know we covered it last year i thought it was a really nice time and usually afterwards um i think me and the rest of the guys are going to we're going to spend the night there in the city so obviously if you guys are going to be in the area after the show drink time that's all i'm saying you know we're going to go out have a couple of drinks it's going to be good going to be good stuff can't get too hammered though because we got to come back the next day and do the ak shootout <laughs> so definitely um definitely check that out i'll i'll put up another post closer to the closer to the event in case anybody wants to check it out what else we got here mike luttrell do you remember the rail 15 inch predator at its sale price of 14.99 do i remember it yes i do the rail predator is now 14.99 mike so you can definitely pick that up at 14.99 if you want to it is on sale once again right there fifteen hundred dollars mike which i think is a is a very good buy if you didn't watch my review definitely check it out it's up on the channel you know i spoke uh spoke about how good i liked it and how well it did against the smaller sb3000 and i thought it just kind of was the next level especially for such a such a big sub sub with a large driver in it um but, but, but what else we got here tony stark what do you expect from black widow i'm gonna be in it what is going on here tony stark are you an actor or something like that are you the tony stark um Ka kakashi em are you going to review color out of space 4k i am not going to review color out of space 4k i have not seen it but i have the feeling if nicholas cage is in it it's probably not going to be good and it's not even in hdr i don't think so once it comes on netflix maybe if it comes on netflix then uh, i might watch it then but i have no interest in reviewing uh at us what is what color out of space in 4k although i do think brass tax did review it on 4k so uh you can uh you can check his out check out his channel I think he covered it and i think uh i think there's a couple other guys that reviewed color out of space in 4k i forgot the name of their channels but i'm pretty sure they did it um what else uh, let me just take one last question have you ever reviewed the lone survivor because i can't find it but i thought i watched it from you i did not do lone survivor 4k i think that movie came out before i started the youtube channel if i'm not mistaken so no i didn't do it um it's a good movie i don't actually think i even saw it in 4k i think i just saw it on regular blu-ray i don't think i had a like i said I don't, I don't think i was doing 4k when that movie came out so i don't i don't believe i even had like a 4k player or anything back then but no i didn't do it but all right so that's it coming up on an hour 54 minutes uh we're gonna cut it short cut it short right here but yeah thanks guys um any questions you know send them my way email them and we will see you in the next stream thanks for watching